Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to another new release review and for today we will be covering The Curse of La Yon. The actual story follows a widowed social worker as she ignores the warning of one of her clients. Only she soon finds out that ignoring this warning has brought the wrath of La Yorna onto her own family. Let's start off with the positives and there aren't many I am so sad to report but yeah let's get into the few positives that we actually have. Firstly being the main cast is actually pretty solid. Linda Cardellini we know what to expect from her by now. She's great in this movie and for the most part the driving force and does carry the vast majority of it on her shoulders. But also, the kid actors in this movie are pretty solid, and I was quite surprised at that, and very happy about that, because a lot of the time, if the kid actors aren't good, it can bring the movie down quite a bit, especially one like this, where a major focus of the movie is the fact that Lyorna wants to take her kids. So, you know, if the kid actors suck, well, you're just going to be dragged out of any moment that they're in. Luckily, they're really solid. And Raymond Cruz, most people will know him from Breaking Bad, in which he played Tuco. I think he's a great actor. He does a great job. He's just really not in it all that much, and that's why I say Linda Cardellini does carry the movie on her shoulders for the vast majority of it. But when Raymond Cruz is in it, I feel like they're really sharing the weight, and he does a solid job, and I hope to see him in more things. Next is Lyorna herself. She's creepy looking enough, pretty generic, but I felt they did a solid job on her, and I do like the backstory, although they really simplify it compared to the actual legend. Yeah, you only have an hour and a half movie to work with. Pretty shoestring budget, you don't really expect much else, but I was surprised. At least, she is pretty scary looking herself. And now on to the negatives. It is super predictable and extremely generic. You know every single thing that is going to happen in this movie moments before it happens. It is literally like the first Annabelle again, very similar as well to The Nun, but you know, it is what it is. These movies make money. And next is the fact that this movie is flat out a jump scare fest. There is not one genuine scare to be found in this movie that is not a jump scare. Pretty much every single scene feels like it's just leading up to the next jump scare. Anytime tension is building, you know just to expect a jump scare, nothing more. Next is another thing that those other movies I just mentioned were very bad for and the same thing goes here and that's exposition dumps. Like I said, I do actually enjoy The Legend of Lyorna, but the fact is we don't figure it out ourselves. There's no slowly piecing the puzzle together. There's no mystery. All the legend just crammed into there and everything you need to know crammed into there and then everything else is just leading to the jump scares. Also, there's another connection to the first Annabelle in this movie that I felt the more and more I thought about this movie and that's the fact that it is almost exactly like the first Annabelle, only you're swapping out the Annabelle doll for, uh water. Yes, that is not a joke. Rather than like Annabelle, where the movie is focusing on this doll and the demons are attached to this doll and you're really just fighting the demons but the doll is always present. Yeah, in this movie it's just water. And it's not just like a certain body of water, it's like the lake, the pool, the tub, the puddle. And then the demon just revolves around that. Second to last is I have no idea why this movie wasn't set in Mexico. It's set in like Los Angeles in 1973 I believe it was even though it does almost nothing to make you feel like it's 1973 a lot of the time unless I was like seeing a TV or a specific type of car I was like wait was this set again? Mexico is the heart of this legend but it's set in 1970s Los Angeles and I just don't understand that. That could have made the movie so much better, at least in the aesthetic standpoint. You look at something like The Nun, at least it was set in this sort of Victorian looking abbey. This movie 1970s Los Angeles. And lastly is the fact that even though this movie is an hour and a half long, the last act feels like it drags on. You feel like the movie is over so many times. Oh no wait, okay no hold on, we gotta do this first. Oh wait, wait no hold on, oh no, someone did something stupid and then, you know, it's, yeah, the movie continues. Nothing new here whatsoever. At least you have some solid performances to come back to. All in all, guys, The Curse of Lyorna, it's uh, <laughs> exactly what you expect it to be. So I'm going to be giving it a 4.5 out of 10. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what were your thoughts on The Curse of Lyorna, and where does it rank for you among the Conjuring universe? And as always, thank you so much for watching, and that's a wrap.